guys, it's Alex. Welcome back to Collection Neo and Statue Forum. And just following on from my last review, which you should have checked out, which is my was the uh, Mega House Conrad Rider 1 Ichigo um, Ultimate Article Statue. I did mention in that review that I am kind of settled on Tokusatsu and specifically Godzilla Conrad Rider and Ultraman to be a big part of my collection. And... Um, this was like the first Godzilla piece I got in properly. Um, now, I don't think I've, I've reviewed a Godzilla piece before, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about Godzilla. Um, I first fell in love with Godzilla when it was on um, Late Night Channel 4, and I think called Creature Feature. Um, they played a bunch of the old um, show um, series, so... Godzilla vs. Gigan, Godzilla vs. Megalon, um, Ibira, um, Mechagodzilla 2, not 1, um, as in the terror of Mechagodzilla. They never played the first one, I didn't see the first one until a lot later. Um, what else did they play? They, anyway, they played a bunch and they had this thing on called Creature Feature. Um, and it used to be on Channel 4, late night, my dad taped them for me. I watched them to death, and then in the mid '90s, when manga were about, um, suddenly I was reintroduced to these amazing um, modern films. So Godzilla from the Heisei era, so Godzilla vs King Ghidorah, Godzilla vs Mothra. I think those are the only two that manga put out over here. And then later on, uh, when about ninety nine two thousand, um, yeah, it will be because when the ninety eight Godzilla film came out, ugh. Tristar and Sony released a bunch of the old Heisei Godzillas and Showa, I think, on um, VHS, but only in the USA. Um, so I had a bit of money at the time, and um, I ordered an NTSC playing um, VHS video player, and I ordered all the VHSs from America um, through Amazon. So I got like Godzilla vs. Battleante, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, Destroyer, Space Godzilla... Um, and a few others um, that I hadn't seen, like Hedera and the original Mechagodzilla. And um, I've kind of followed Godzilla since, um, you know, in the, all the Millennium series. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's plenty of Godzilla videos out there explaining this sort of stuff, where these terms come from. Um, but the Millennium series is great. I'd probably say that um, GMK is probably my favourite Godzilla fil film out of the lot. Um, and then obviously we had the American ones, the more recent ones, the Gareth Edwards 2014 one, and King of the Monsters just this year, which were both fab, both really, really good. Um, but in 2016, we had this guy. This is from Shin Godzilla. I wasn't sold. When those initial designs came out for him, I was like, what the fuck is Hideaki Anno doing? Now, if you don't know who Hideaki Anno is, he's the director of Shin Godzilla. I think he wrote it as well. Or well, he might have just wrote his and not directed his. I'm pretty sure he did both. Um, he was the creator of um, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, if you haven't seen that, it was a, very much a series that turned the mecha genre on its head um, and had some weird concepts, um, which carried over to Shin Godzilla. Now, if you haven't seen Shin Godzilla, I'd really recommend go and watch it. Um, the statue is Godzilla in his um, final form, which call it his fourth form. I'd say it's his fourth, the tail's the first form, then the thing that comes on land is second, and then third form, and then the yeah, I'd say it's his fourth. Um, and like I say, Godzilla, when it comes to Godzilla collectibles, you go to one place, you go to X+. Plus. X+, Plus do vinyl Godzilla pieces, which are rather stunning. Um, I've got a few on the way, um, and they do them in 12-inch scale, and they do them in gigantic scale. So tw a gigantic scale is around 18, 20 inches tall, but the thing is, if you get a 12-inch Godzilla, it's 18 inches long because of the tail. Um, if you get a, an 18-inch Godzilla, the tail's 24, his body's 24 inches long, and they get massive. They really do. So I decided to go for a 12-inch scale because I didn't want to be limited to one or two pieces, especially when they're all out there. So I went smaller so I could have more, 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 more. But in the interim, I was kind of looking for polystone versions of Godzilla, and this popped up, and this is by a company called um, Albatross Japan, who have done multiple Godzilla pieces, um, but there was very, very little information on this guy um, at all. 
Um, so I kind of ordered this. I picked it up for 200 quid, delivered from Japan. It came EMS. It came in about four days once they finally shipped it. It took them about a week, a week to ship. But it came in about four days. And it's it's grown on me. Now there is one major flaw, which we'll get into. Um, but the sculpt's pretty good. If it's it's not an, an accurate sculpt completely, but it's pretty good. And the whole thing is cast in clear resin, so as you can probably see, there's a lot of purple highlights. And we'll get into why that is in a bit. But um, the the actual um, if you just sleep like, see Shin Godzilla on his own, um, on his own, no, the normal colours of Shin Godzilla, he's black with red, and this guy's more grey with purple. And like I say, I think this version is an alternate version. So I think they released a version which had got all four forms. So that had got the normal paint of the black and red tones. And then I think they released this one afterwards. So this one has got a switch out head, which will be here, doing the breath. And this alternate paint scheme. Now I'm not, and don't quote me on these guys because I'm not 100% sure. The amount of info I found on Albatross Japan is pretty much zilch. The amount of info I found on this particular statue was very little. Uh, I think um, the site was called Kaiju Battle had a bit of info on it, but they were just like prototype pictures. Um, and definitely they weren't of this version. Um, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. It's grown on me over the few days. Now let's get straight into what I saw as soon as I took it out of the um, packaging. Now when this come, I had no idea that it was going to have a stand. I had no idea it was going to have a switch out head. I had no idea how big it was going to be. <laughs> I had no idea um, that it had a light up feature, which it has, a really dumb one. Um, also kind of cool. And you, like I said in the Comrade video, I'm a fucking sucker for a gimmick. And this guy's got a gimmick. <clears throat> So first things first, let's just go over the, the fucking elephant in the room. Can I do a bit of a zoom on the camera? Yes, I can. This head seam is awful. It's just awful. Guys. So as you can see, all the body's made out of a clear resin. Let's just zoom out a bit. All the entire body is made out of clear resin and so is the head. Now the sculpt on the head isn't too bad, and the paint isn't that bad. You know, his eyes are all that tiny. But when that goes on there, that seam is just the worst. It's just the worst. Let's say, actually, let's forget the zooming. Let's say and bring him towards us a little bit so we can do this. The seam reminds me of um, Sideshow Hulk. Now, if you, any of you had the green or red premium format Hulk, the newer one, you'll know what I'm talking about. Eek. And the problem is, it's not so much a seam, it's the fact that this hasn't been painted properly. It's like they've done a gradient. So you've got clear resin showing here, and then the head isn't, paint, isn't painted in that gradient. So you just completely see the seam. Now if I switch heads, this head is actually at a slightly different angle. That one's a little better, but the jarring, it actually fits better, but the jarring thing is still there, that there's no paint here, and it goes into this dark grey paint. Now, on display, like the Sideshow Premium Format Hulk, a lot of people have got that guy on display. Um, this looks great. It actually looks fine. It's not something that your eye's drawn towards, especially from like that sort of angle. Let me go back to the normal head. You know, from that angle, you're not going to be worried about that seam. It looks great. But we have got this seam on this tail as well. <laughs> Which I can understand. The tail's huge, by the way. Godzilla himself is about 11 inches tall. The tail goes up to about 20 inches. You know, this is part of the design. I think it's bigger than um, it should be. But I think, um, like I say, Albatross Japan have done like a stylized design on Godzilla, really. Um, if I'd paid... Now, this... This thing is on eBay for like four, five hundred quid, and no joke. Um, if I'd paid that, I'd be probably livid. But for two hundred quid, I think it's alright. It, it kind of brings me joy because it's such a little fucking odd thing. It really is such an odd oddity. Uh, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to pause. I'm going to go low. We'll start at the base. 
We'll work as well. We'll go up the tail and then I'll show you this ridiculous light up feature. So here we go guys, just starting at the bottom, as you can see, very simple base, Godzilla 2016 on the front, just a black base, nothing about it, there's no buttons, no switches on it, because why would you want to turn your light up on with a button or a switch on top of here or around this side, no, no, no. So the actual light up switch is underneath, so I will have to pick the statue up or I will have to drag it back off the end of here just so I can get a finger underneath and... It's an afterthought. It must have been an afterthought because why would you design a light up feature that has you have to lift the entire statue to turn it on and off? Beggar's belief. So let's move up a little bit. <laughs> like I say, this odd statue, guys. Really odd. Um, sculpt here on the thighs is actually pretty good, and the paints aren't too bad either. Um, like I say, I think because it's got this clear resin underneath, all this should have been like a dark red. But because, like I say, this is like the special effects version, um, it's just like a purple clear resin. Because if you don't know when Godzilla does his breath and Shin Godzilla, it's actually purple. Um, which is actually, <laughs> weirdly enough, based on Prince. Because I think Prince had died that year. And so they did Godzilla's breath purple. It's an amazing scene. It's probably one of my favourite Godzilla scenes in any of them. Um but yeah, so we've got this purple thing going on, but as you can see, the sculpt's pretty well detailed and the paints aren't too bad. Don't get me wrong, they could be better. But hey, that's the world we live in. And then a bit higher up, we'll get right up to that seamy head. And as you can see, the hands very much showing the clear resin. It's like they've made a, you know, a conscious choice not to paint certain parts. I've got to say the spines with all the purple in them look really, really good. Because again, if you haven't seen the film, spoilers, um, he shoots his this laser that comes out of his mouth, comes out of his spines, and it comes out of his tail as well. So they've carried that purple through. Now what it feels like that they have done is stuck the tail on from the normal one, rather than this one. I mean, it is kind of there. I suppose it would be a deeper red. But it's definitely, as you can see here, more red running through the tail. Like I say, it's an odd and weird statue. And obviously you've got this seam line here where the tail connects because they are not going to put this into one piece. But that's not too bad. You know, that one's a kind of forgive compared to the head. And like I say, the head sculpt, it's not bad. Paint could be a lot better. But, you know, we are working on a budget here, guys. So 200 quid. I don't mind. And then, like I say, you've got the alternate head when he opens up. That's actually pretty well done in the inside. But the teeth are picked out okay. There's definitely seen worse, but you're not talking like a neck of fucking figure paint job here. It's better than that. And then, of course, with this head on, you get like the different angle. So the angle of the head's up. And it totally works, actually, with that head on. It really does. This is that seam, man. Where does should be heard and not seen. Is that work? Not really. <laughs> um, and then, like I say, you've got this huge, huge tail. And so what I'm going to do is just pop this off. There is magnets in it. And there's the um, tip of the tail. Obviously before the final transformation. And that isn't great. Paint's okay there. But um, it's an odd statue. It's not one of them statues where I'm like... First, when I first got it out of the box, I was like, oh my god, what the fuck have I spent my money on? Um, and then, you know, you find out that the button for the light-up's on the base, and but you didn't even know there was a light-up, so does it matter? Um, <laughs> and then I just stuck it on display, and I was like, oh my god, the seams on the head. And then I did pictures of it yesterday, and I was like, actually, this looks pretty fucking good on camera. And then, you know, I've sat, and I've looked, and I've admired, and... I like it. I really do. It's one of those statues which definitely isn't flawless. It's got character. It's got, I mean, it sounds ridiculous that the statue's got character, but it really has. So, but enough rambling. Let's get on to this uh, famous lights up feature. What I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to try and do all this on camera. Um, the light up happens on the main body, so keep watching that. And I'm going to slide him back slightly. Let's make sure he's still on. Then I'll do this again, guys, with the lights off. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? No, are you really ready? Here we go. Okay, there we go.
and that's your sequence. Now, I'm sure you can see straight away, it looks pretty fucking cool in the body. And the purple looks brilliant. That, if it could stay on that, I'd be so happy, but it doesn't. But here's the problem. The gap on the head, it feels like that should have gone into the head. So it was like charging his breath up. But no, they didn't go for that. <laughs> but apart from that, it's quite cool. I'm going to turn the lights off so we can see a bit better. <laughs> they could do a fantastic burning Godzilla and destroy it. But I really like the blue. The blue's brilliant. The purpley blue. And then even this bit's pretty cool. It's just... If it just went into the head, it'd be fine. It would be nice as well if it went a little into the tail, but it doesn't. But the purple looks great. Like I say, I didn't know it had this feature. And it's in such an awkward place, I'll never probably use it again after this review. Just to show people. But I do like the flashing there. It's, it's pretty cool. I've got, it's really grown on me, this piece has. It's a weird thing. I've only had it a few days. I'm kind of glad I didn't just like jump into a review straight away because it would have been mostly negative. When really it's the little statue that could. <laughs> it's not it's not a bad thing at all. Like I said, if you can pick it up for what I've paid for, it's, it's pretty cool. There's better Shin Godzilla's out there, 100%. You know, um, the X Plus one for starters, I'm sure. But um, I like this as a novelty. As a novelty little piece with the stupid light up. I do like it. I'm not going to tell everyone to buy it. I'm not even going to tell anyone to buy it, you know. But I think if you want an odd Shin Godzilla statue with a, bad, with a couple of bad seams and a goofy light up feature, don't look any further than this, guys. <laughs> um, so that's about it for this guy. Like I say, he was 200 quid. I'm happy with him, man. I'm happy with him. I can live with the faults. And I probably will pick up an X plus same um, um, Shin Godzilla. And if I do, I'll definitely bring this guy back for a comparison. Um, and I have got other X plus pieces coming in. So I will be reviewing them. Um, I've got some other Conrader pieces. Um, nothing for Ultraman yet. Kind of waiting for the next Prime One piece from them. Um, and that's it. I'll just see what comes. Um, main pre orders are still like Guyver 3 and um, Ornstein from First Figures and Guts from First Figures and um, Saratobi and King Enma from um, Naruto from Oniri Creations. Um, so we've still got some big boys coming in, guys. But a few little. Goofy, weird, strange reviews thrown in at the same time. Um, and yeah, I'll be back soon with another review, guys. So um, thanks for watching. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from the weird Shin Godzilla statue. And we'll um, see you next time. Bye.